Developing news in the Trump hush money trial. Setbacks in the selection process as one of the jurors that was previously seated was dismissed. Antoine Lewis has been in Lower Manhattan this morning with more on why this juror was dismissed and what went on in court today. Antoine. A lot went on in court this morning. Good morning, every, afternoon, everyone. And Chris, we'll talk about that juror and the reasons for that dismissal. But as you pointed out, we are now, I meaning the case is now down to six jurors instead of the seven that was in place at the beginning of the week. Let's show you some videos. We tell you what happened this morning. Former President Donald Trump was mostly quiet in the courtroom this morning. This was day three of jury selection for his upcoming trial, where he's accused of a scheme to bury damaging stories during his 2016 presidential run, which included payments to squash sex scandals with two women, including an adult film actress. Prosecutors allege that he falsified business records to cover up those payments. The former president has denied any wrongdoing. Now, this morning in court, the prosecutors actually said that former President Trump had violated his gag order to uh, this morning that the court actually put in place, and they said that he violated it at least seven times. They cited a New York Post article on Michael Cohen that was posted on Trump's social media platforms, and in the article, uh, in, the, in the post, rather, he was referring to Cohen as a serial perjurer. Team Trump said that those posts had more to do with his political campaign and not so much the trial. Now, let's talk about the jurors. Uh, as we mentioned at the top, one has been let go. Juror number two asked to be removed. Now, although juror identities are supposed to be anonymous, somehow hers became public. And she said that she was inundated with messages and links to articles on the case and believes that she could no longer be fair and asked to be removed. Now, at least 50 of the prospective 96 jurors were have been dismissed. We caught up with two on their way out today, and here's what they had to say. I think it would have been really interesting to participate, but it wouldn't have been proper be, for me to participate because, as I say, I, I have a history of satirizing Mr. Trump. So uh, that could have been weaponized by the defense. Had I been seated, it would have been irresponsible to do it. So I, I withdrew. I, I want this to, to proceed. I want it to be fair. Um, and if the if he should be found guilty, uh, I wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize the outcome of the trial. Everybody was shocked when we saw him on Tuesday for the first time. Um, you know, we couldn't believe that that was the case. Uh, so we were shocked and frozen, and uh, you know it's a big case. It's a historical thing, right? right. So it's it's you know it's very important. I mean it's a, it's very important. Like our role was very important there as jurors. And did you get the vibe that everybody kind of had that sense of how important this is, and everybody you know? Kind yes, of everybody. To part? Yes, everybody. Now, the judge, Judge Rashawn, in this case, actually chastised, if you will, the press that was covering this matter, saying that perhaps too much information is getting out, whether it's an accent, a foreign accent, or even employer information, which is employer information's current and prior employers, are actually part of the questionnaire of the 42 questions that jurors have to fill out. So the judge has asked the press, meaning us, to not report on the employment information of any of the jurors that are selected in the trial, because, of course, it can lead to them becoming known and thus not anonymous. Linda Schmidt's inside the courtroom. She's two rows up ahead of me. Michelle Ross is to my right. We've got you covered out here, but this is the very latest from Lower Manhattan. We'll send things now back uptown to you.